Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and today this is part six of our Learn Lightroom 5 series and in this episode we're going to talk about the spot removal tool. The spot removal tool is the second tool from the left on the tools palette. Um, you could access it uh, by hitting Q on your keyboard or of course if you just click on it. Um, this is a photograph of my son Joe and we're going to start out by um, getting rid of some of these moles. Um, so we access the spot removal tool. You'll see it has two modes, clone and heal. I usually uh, start out in heal mode and I'm going to explain all that in a minute and the difference between the two. There's also two sliders, sli uh, size, which adjusts the size of your brush. You also could hit the bracket keys. The left bracket key makes it smaller and the right bracket key makes it larger. Uh, the opacity, I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, but right now we'll leave it at 100% and I usually have it at 100%. Um, <clears throat> so we want to get rid of this mole here, you just click on it. Lightroom automatically will sample an area that it thinks will be a good replacement. Um, if you don't like where it samples, you can see how when you hover over it, it turns into a little hand. You can just move it to wherever you want. Now I'm going to show you the difference between the uh, clone and heel by sampling his shirt. Now when I sample his shirt, see it took the texture of the shirt, but it has the tone and the color of his skin. And that's when you're in heal mode. When you're in clone mode, it actually takes the pixels, it copies the pixels over to here. So it will, um, you know, show you the, the difference between the two. Normally I, I stick with heal mode and um, see how that does. Um, if it I don't like what it it's doing and I move I can't find a real good spot then I try clone mode and see what that does. Um, so it's a little bit of one or the other um, but most of the time I'm in heal mode. Um, so then you could just go on and um, keep sampling um, spots removing his you know spots wherever and as you can see this one is active now and we still have these other two. If you wanted to go back to this one all you got to do is click on it and you make that one active again and move things around. You want to go back to this guy, move it around, whatever. I didn't want to do that. But anyways, you could then just keep going on. You can move spots very quickly after a while, after you get into it a little bit. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was the opacity slider. Now I could hit the com command minus to zoom back out or I could zoom back in command plus. I could hold the space bar down and pull it down here and we'll look at his eyes and I mean Joe's 15 he's not very wrinkled um, but a couple little wrinkles under his eyes here so what you could do is you could just I have it in heal mode that's what I usually do this in and you could paint over it it sampled an area heal here you could hit the H key on the keyboard and it will hide those lines in the circles where you sampled uh, hit the H key again and it goes back on so you could toggle it on and off with the H key. Now you can see that kind of looks, you know, bad. If you turn the opacity slider, I found usually somewhere in the 30s and it seems to blend better. Now if you look, uh, I could turn this whole effect off with this slider here. This is without the effect. That's with. Without. With. You can see it's subtle but it does the job. You could do it over here now. And it just does just enough to soften those wrinkles a little bit. Obviously, if you turn the opacity all the way up, it looks fake. It looks like Joe has eyeliner on. Um, but that gives you the idea why you would use the opacity slider, um, you know, in, in this case. You could jump over now to this other photo. I'm going to show you some other uh, things. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, obviously, this... Uh, photograph of the statue of David, um, a replica obviously. Um, we'll go into the um, the spot removal tool. We have it in heal mode. I want to get rid of these trees. So I hit the right bracket key to make this bigger and I could just paint right over that tree. And see now, um, go on this side here. I don't like where it's sampled. I can move it somewhere else. Yeah, right about there I guess is good. 
hit enter. I see I left a little chunk of tree there, but that's all right. Well, you don't like what you did though. You could just reselect it, hit the delete key. It get it get rid gets rid of it, and you could do it all over again. And I don't like where that sampled. You just move it around till you find a spot that blends in the best. Yeah, right about there, I guess. And anyways, we'll go on. Same thing here. I want to get rid of this this braid blades of grass. Just do that. I like the way it sampled, I guess. I don't know. I could be more fussy, but for the sake of speed in this video and get it done, we'll just leave it at that. And this one here, then I'd probably put in this uh, white vignette. It helps it even blend in more. The last thing I wanted to show you is if you want to get rid of um, something that's a strong vertical or a strong horizontal. As you can see here, hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. I sorry, I had to um, I had to pause the video and restart it because I don't know if you noticed, the tool started getting real herky-jerky and I found a bug in Lightroom 5 with the spot removal tool. If I use it a lot, as I was doing here, I'm on my fourth photograph, um, it starts to get um, it starts to get jerks around. It, it's not smooth. I can't get it to where I need it to be. Um, so I, I paused the video and I restarted Lightroom and it seems to have fixed it for now, so hopefully it stays fixed. Um, till I finish the video. Hopefully they'll update Lightroom and get rid of that bug. Now as I started saying before I stopped the video is um, if you have a, a strong vertical like this that you want to get rid of or a strong horizontal, in the past versions of Lightroom you had to take a circle, your circular sample here then go down a little bit, take another one, go down a little bit, take another one. You might have had to do it about eight or nine times to get rid of this pole. Um, now what you could do is you take a, a sample at one end, you go down to the other end, and you hold the shift key down, and you hit sample again. And what it will do is it drew that straight line and took a sample there. Now you hit the H key, it actually did a pretty good job. Um, so that's you know one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is let me delete it. Hopefully it stays smooth for a moment. Is you hold the shift key down when you're going to be doing the strong vertical or horizontal. And as you see, as you start, now watch. I'm going to try. I'm going to move it way over here. See how it's not moving with the cursor. It's only going to go down. And hit the H key to hide those lines. And if, obviously it it did a decent job. Now again, if I didn't like the job it did, I could. Just, hit the clone key and see what that looks like. I don't like that at all. There's a tiny bit of shadow in there, but um, you know, I could I could try to get fussy and move this around um, a little bit. No, probably was best right where it was. Yeah, it was best right where it was, but so I could hit delete and I could do it again. Hold the shift key down and paint my line down. See it's getting herky-jerky again. Delete it. Now we're determined. Hold the shift key down, click and paint and hide there that's I mean that's would be hard for someone to see that um, so hit the H key to bring it back and then I could just close down this tool and that's you know decent job I mean it's not is it's not content aware like Photoshop um, is but it is a lot more powerful than it was in Lightroom 4 and there's a lot more you could do with it and you could um, most times it saves you a trip because typically if I wanted to get rid of that pole I would leave Lightroom and go into Photoshop, get rid of the pole, go back in Lightroom 
Uh, so this saves some time in your photo editing. So that's it. What you uh, need to remember is the difference between um, the clone and heal um, that you could hit H to um, turn off or on the sample areas. You could um, switch between different ones. Um, I mentioned that with uh, the photographs of Joe. If you want to make another one active, go to click on another one. See all these different ones we did. Just click on a different one. If you don't like it, you could delete it by hitting the delete key. Go on to another one. You could resample that one by moving it around. You don't like it, hit the delete key. You could go on to a different one by just you know moving around. So and you, again, you hit the H key to make them disappear, so you could see what you did, and um, hit the uh, Command Plus and Command Minus key to zoom in and out on your photograph, and hit to make the brush bigger or smaller. You hit the left bracket key to make it smaller and the right bracket key to make it bigger. And remember to use opacity if you want to get rid of some wrinkles. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I hope that helped. Um, again, I appreciate you watching. Um, stop over to anthemorganti.com. I got a lot of videos over there. The first five videos of this series um, are there. Um, learn all about Lightroom, and I'm going to have more going up in the future. And there's other videos on photography, and there's articles. And um, I'd appreciate if you subscribe uh, to my channel on YouTube. Uh, the username's Anthony Morganti. I'd really appreciate that. And I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and commented on it. Um, thanks for watching, and um, hope to get more videos up real soon. Take care.